What are your team's goals? Initially, it started with the passion for rockets. So um, the team was created to build and design and test rockets. But our goal uh, developed into something more solid, which is to educate both our members and the public about rockets and um, about how you design, um, how you build them, how you test them, and how you launch them, of course. We've turned it into more of an educational project for everyone, um, as well as a, a, a project where you practice your technical skills. That's it. And I feel like we've also got, in terms of our wider goals, we've got a separate team of the Altitude Records team, ART, where in their sole goal was breaking altitude records. So that's how last year they launched Apex I that broke the I class rocket motor record in the, for launches in the UK. And they just keep on striving to go higher and higher. And as, as with all space teams, at the end of the day, we want to go and hit a space shot eventually. But that's future down the line. Maybe, I don't know, four or five years down the future. We'll see. Our goals are essentially to, to learn everything we can right now. We develop knowledge bases so the next people can build better rockets, um, more ambitious projects, and um, break more records, records. How do you recruit new members to your team? We have open recruitment for everyone. Um, but our main recruitment events are during uh, October when we start our course. Um, and we have what's called a recruitment event where we um, members from all of our sub teams present what their each sub team does um, to, to members of um, to interested people. And essentially we, we don't have any filtering. So whoever gets passionate from that, whoever um, is interested in working in a project, whoever finds that um, Imperial Rocket College fits for them, um, can easily join us. Uh, but again, we have open recruitment throughout the whole year. So if anyone sees our work and is interested, they can always join our team no matter time. So we have members joining even now before, for example, Europe. And also like in terms of the members we have, we've got most of the, most of the stuff we do is in person. During COVID, it was a bit hard because of course everyone was remote. But now here we're trying to for, trying to get mostly in-person membership because we feel that being in person is the best we can learn. Of course, the, we do have lots. We do have remote meetings quite frequently. Like I know that our altitude record team we have constant, frequent remote meetings to go and discuss their separate individual sub teams. Furthermore, with regards to like our, we don't really give our candidates an exam or something. We sort of just want everyone to feel included. We don't want to go and have someone where they feel gatekept or locked out purely because of the fact that. They didn't meet some arbitrarily set standards. And we also recruit during, like, from every department in Imperial. So we welcome everyone, whoever is interested in rocketry. We mainly consist of aeronautical and the mechanical engineering students, but we welcome everyone. What can your members learn from joining your team? I feel that, honestly, with Imperial, with ICLR, there's a limitless amount of knowledge you can learn. And I feel that a lot of that comes to the fact that for aeronautical engineering students, particularly, during our course, there's not a huge focus on rockets in themselves. The course, the main things that we do focus, which is rocket related, is, is a space propulsion and advanced propulsion module, which handles a bit into a rocket propulsion. But there's nothing really about rocket dynamics, rocket, stru rocket structures, rocket, aer rocket aerodynamics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And those are the sort of things that we really go and teach our members, really builds on the analyses that are built on for planes that we get throughout our course. Additionally, with ICLR, especially during the third and summer terms, we give our members considerable practical knowledge and understanding in terms of like actual machining skills, which is particularly crucial for aeronautical engineers who we do not have the same sort of machining ability as top-notch MECM students per se. And we feel that we give them this. And we like, within ICLR, I've been able to learn manual milling. I've been able to learn CNC routing, generative design, et cetera, et cetera. Plus, I'm sure a lot of uh, work with composites she don't get during the oh, yeah. course. You learn how to... Um, how to do layers, how to build composite um, parts. But yeah, it's, it's, mostly, um, it's mostly practical skills and practical knowledge about rockets that you gain. So there's so many members and there's so much to learn from these members as well. Um, so not, not only do you learn by building a rocket and building your own part during the, team, um, during the year, um, so you learn the technical side of the rocket, but you also learn how to build it, how to practically uh, construct it. Uh, you, you can do that yourself. And um, in ICLR, we focus on everyone um, learning by themselves and 
everyone being passionate about something and then learning about it. So in ICLA, there's not, nothing in particular. There's no guideline in what you will learn. But during your um, work with the team, you learn so much about um, your, your particular sub-team and um, practically how to build a rocket. How do you design your rockets? Basically, the whole design process for a rocket, like the way we streamline it is to take place over the course of one whole year to stagger the rocket from conception during October, the moment we get back from Europe. That's when the conceptual design starts. So basically between middle of October and middle of November or so, then we have a conceptual design as well as inducting the new members who have come to ICLR. And then between mid-November and the end of first term, that's when they start their, start their whole design process. Design process. Then the second term, that's where we have a lot of design reviews to verify the quality of the components, as well as just do whole team, team wide discussions. And that's where a lot of the parts get finalized and design freezes. And within third term, that's our term when we do prototyping and then into the summer is where manufacturing, we do most of our manufacturing. And this therefore puts us in a good stage that we're, our rocket should be completed by about September or so. And that gets us ready to test all our components to be redundant and uh, make sure they work. Um, so yeah, it mainly starts with after Europe. Well, when we um, decide what we want to do for the year and we follow the path that Jaden mentioned. Um, and throughout the whole, um, throughout the whole year, we, um, we review our designs again um, and other members of the team get to review and criticize other designs. So by the time we start to build them, uh, we're sure we have um, peer reviewed designs um, that, that are well built and simulated.